Although Studio wasn't built from the ground up as an animation tool, many are surprised at how capable it actually is. In this series of animation tutorials, we'll be going over how to get the most out of your animation renders. Since the introduction of NVIDIA's iRay Render Engine, render times have been reduced significantly. However, when you're rendering out potentially hundreds of frames for a video, you'll need to minimize those render times as much as possible. First of all, open up your Render Settings pane. If you do not have it docked anywhere in your interface, go to Windows, Panes, Render Settings, and dock it by dragging and dropping it anywhere you want. At the top of this pane, make sure your render engine is set to NVIDIA iRay. Go to the Progressive Render submenu where you will see Render Quality Enable. Click the button and make sure it is off. This turns your iRay render from a percentage of reality target to a set number of iterations. And you can lower the number of these iterations where you see max samples. You can experiment with the number of iterations you allow by setting them low and doing a test render of your scene. Try 100 iterations and render a still image current frame. If it looks good at 100, you can proceed with those settings or even try lowering it further. If it doesn't look good enough though, you'll want to raise that number. Certain scenes will look great at lower iterations. However, scenes with low lights take more iterations to make look good. A scene with many lights and many surfaces to bounce off of will also take many iterations to get a good render. In this render, you can see some grain, particularly on the side of her nose. Um, in this circumstance, we're probably going to want to raise the number of iterations. So we're going to bump this up to 200. 200 would be good. We're seeing a little bit better results at 148 iterations. And it looks like 200 is probably going to be pretty appropriate. So another thing that we might want to try is some manual oversampling. We might want to actually render this image at something higher than the typical 1920 by 1080. So if we render something that is 150% the size of our target resolution, then once it's done, we can downsize that and those individual pixels of graininess will be sampled out by their nearest neighbors in that process. So you can lock your aspect ratio by setting your dimension preset to 1920 or 16 by 9 widescreen. And then whatever you set your, what, your width pixel dimension to, your height is going to automatically be adjusted. So in this situation, we're going to try something 50% larger than 1920, which is going to be 2730. We can let that go. And once, once the image is resolved to something that we find adequate, we can set our max samples to match. So here we're coming up on 100 iterations and we've just surpassed 100 by 132. So the images are pretty comparable but we actually achieved that comparable image quality with a lower number of render iterations, which is going to significantly reduce our render times. So one final way to get your render times down even further is to render out in the OpenGL setting. This will render out exactly what you see in your active viewport. So if you're in texture shaded, it will render out texture shaded. You should always do one of these as a test render at the very minimum to make sure that your motion is correct. If you find any issues with your animation, you can make changes before committing to the longer iRay render times. I would also suggest that you render to an image series as opposed to a movie. That way, if something happens and the process is cut off, you don't lose your, all of your work. You can pick up right where you left off. And then when you have that series of images, you can import them into your editing software as an image sequence.